lying there. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? <laughs> everyone is so enthusiastic. <laughs> Why well, I'm so glad that you. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you're here. We have amazing weather. It is a beautiful day outside. And today we get to celebrate um, all of our veterans. So during the service today, we will be making it a point to celebrate our veterans as Veterans Day is coming up this week. Um, and we are so thankful to do so. So when we get to that point in the service, veterans, be prepared. All right. So a um, couple announcements uh, for this morning real quick. Uh, one is a reminder of the surveys. We have the charge survey going out about COVID-19 policies. Uh, your input on this is vital. It's crucial. Uh, don't forget, put your name and what church you're with and make sure that you get it back. We've been getting several by mail and people dropping them off. So please make sure you do that. They are due on the 15th, so next Sunday. Um, and we'll be compiling this input to help us make decisions as we move forward uh, with COVID-19. Also, you may have noticed in the, uh, in the newsletter, there was another survey, not so much survey, but a, a sheet that went out asking for your contact information. We're trying to update our contact information list, but we're also putting together a service so that when snow and ice hits or other things happen that may affect worship service, we can contact you pretty much instantly. There's a service that will make a phone call and we'll record the message so you'll hear one of our lovely voices telling you what's going on. Um, and you'll get a phone call. You either pick it up and hear the message or it'll play on your machine. Uh, and if you choose to, it'll send you a text. So you can get a text saying, hey, this is what's going on for church today. Uh, but the only way that service works is if we have your correct uh, contact information. So make sure you fill that out and turn it in as well. The surveys and that sheet can go in the offering plate, and we'll just uh, pull them out uh, and use those. So if you have questions on them, please contact the church office, ask any of the staff, and we can help you uh, with those. Also, we have Return to Bethlehem coming up, and I want to thank everyone that is coming out to be a part of that and participating in that event. I'm really looking forward uh, to what we're going to be able to do uh, with that. There are some needs, though, that we have. Uh, so this is looking in your basement, looking out in your garage, looking in your shed, wherever you uh, can to find lanterns, extension cords, and floodlights. Anything else? Or are those... The Okay, so those are the primary things, lanterns, extension cords, floodlights. The other thing that we could use everybody's help with, spread the word. Share with people what's happening. The majority of this is going to be outside, so it should be pretty safe for people to be able to come and gather, and we're going to be uh, limiting groups um, in their size for how they go around and creating space there, so it should be... Um, it should be a good event and a safe event for people to come out to. And I don't know about you, but we need a little Christmas this year, don't we? Uh, and this is going to be a great way of really getting the holiday season uh, launched in an amazing way, both for our church and for our community. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, all right. So, Anita. I just wanted to let everyone know that the chain store and restaurant gift card order forms are now available out in the Narthex, and this is a fundraiser for the Building Fund and Habitat for Humanity. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Anita. You may have heard how loud the church bell was this morning. Everyone hear that? It's really loud this morning because Buddy pulled the cover off. Uh, because one of the things we're trying to show off are some of the artifacts of the church, since we're, trying, we're in the process of celebrating the 200th anniversary of the church. So he pulled the cover out there so that when you go out in the narthex, you can look up inside and see our historic bell. Uh, so make it a point to go out and take a look at that. And if you want more stories on that, please see Buddy. He could tell you uh, even more about some of the drama that took place with the, with the bell uh, back in the day. Uh, but that is the original bell, correct? 
that was in the original church and is now hanging here and ringing out loud for us. So thank you. So I have a quick video for you this morning. Um, and it's about Operation Christmas Child. Those boxes are due next Sunday. Can you believe it? So anyway, take a look at this video. Mm. Finally. Peace and quiet. Peace and quiet. Now let's pack those Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. If you're like me, it can be difficult to know where to start. To make things easier, just start with a box. Any average size cardboard or plastic box will work, but I find a shoe box works best. After that, you'll need to decide what age group you're going to pack for, and if it's for a boy or a girl. Now let's fill that shoe box. It's best to start by selecting a wild item, something like a soccer ball and a pump or a stuffed animal, something that's really special. <laughs> yes and yes. Once you've got your wow item, you can start to fill it with other fun stuff, like toys, clothes, sandals, or even school supplies. <laughs> what do you mean, however? However, there are some items you don't want to include. Things like gum, toothpaste, items related to war, liquids. But for a complete list, check out the website. Oh boy, I think they're gonna like this. While a shoebox might seem small and simple, it can mean the world to a child who may have never received a gift. It shows God's love in a tangible way to children in need, and together with the local church worldwide, shares the good news of Jesus Christ. This is why you will also want to personalize your shoebox. Even including a letter or a photo of your family or yourself can make it extra special to the child. The most powerful thing you can do is pray. Pray that your gift will make an impact. That both the child and the community will discover the love and name of Jesus. <laughs> when your box is finished, you can make your $9 donation online or by mailing in your contribution using the business reply envelope in the brochure. This donation is critical for training and equipping local churches to share the gospel, along with the collection, processing, and shipping of the shoebox gifts. And don't forget to activate a label so you can follow your box and discover its final destination. Finally, make sure to check the website for the closest drop-off location near you. And make sure to mark the date for the third week in November as National Collection Week. Well, there you go. You just packed yourself a shoebox. <laughs> Grandma. Already done. What? How? I thought she wasn't going to stores right now. She isn't. She packed her box online. That's right, Dad. With just a few clicks of a mouse, Grandma packed her whole shoebox online. She can choose from all kinds of gifts, even make it personal by adding a letter and a photo. Wow. So she doesn't even need to leave the house? Nope. She can stay safe inside and still have time for Doomcraft. Stocking complete. All right, so if you haven't done so yet, make sure you pack your shoe boxes. I love the video because it gives you insight into some of the new things that they've put in place. If you don't feel safe going out to the store to pack a shoe box, you can pack a shoe box online. Um, so please make it a point to participate in that. It is an incredible ministry that it is, it, it's an amazing blessing. Uh, to the kids that receive that. You see their faces, you see the change that takes place, and they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's all the announcements today. Um, but as we begin today, I'd like us all to take a deep breath. Breathe it in and breathe it out. All of us have been through a lot of presidential election drama that has affected friendships and even family relationships. Some people are elated today, others are sad, and some are waiting for all the recounts and lawsuits to play out. Whether you, wherever you are on this or however you are feeling, I want to remind us all of one very important truth and fact. God is still on the throne, and Jesus is still our Lord. Because of this, we continue to have hope, no matter who our earthly leader may be. Our citizenship is not of this world, and our hope is found in God's word, not in political policies. 
As Christians, let us continue to be the people God has called us to be, and let us continue to pray for all of our leaders, regardless of what party they are affiliated with. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All will be well. With that, I invite you to stand and wave at people around you as we pass the peace of Christ. If you are able, we ask that you please rise and join us in the call to worship. A time set apart. A space filled with silence. Hearts seeking solace. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn uh, is Seek Ye First, and we'll be doing first, first, and refrain. Amen. Please be seated. This is a time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our joys and our concerns with one another and before God. And we are thankful for this time in the service and working on making sure that we find safe ways of doing this. So I'm going to be distant from you, but we do want to hear your prayers lifted up. I first want to start by just thanking you all. I shared about my dad being in the hospital last week and having to leave after services to be able to go down and help um, my family. Uh, thank you for your prayers, both for my travels as well as for my dad. He is home and he is, he is doing better. Uh, they were able to take care of the issues and concerns that he was facing at that time. Um, so he is, all, all is well. Uh, so things are going very well. So thank you again for your prayers there. Um, have another prayer concern this week because, you know, you can't just have one problem over the course of the week. You have to have several. Um, but my dog, Got out of the yard, did something to his rear leg, and tore his, I guess in a dog it's a CCL, but similar to an ACL. Um, so now we're trying to get our dog taken care of. So pray for Coda, my, my dog, my Chesapeake Bay Retriever mix. So what joys or concerns do you have today that you would like to lift up? 
Yes. Yeah, definitely. Grateful that God is in control, and that is a hope and a peace that we need to hold on to all the time. So thank you for lifting that up, Anita. Definitely. So praise and thanksgiving for Anita's brother and sister and all the help that they've offered through all the different things that she's gone through. So we lift them up in praise. Jay. Okay. 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 And first name again? Bob Klein. Okay, so um, lift up the family and friends of Bob Klein, uh, who passed away this week. He was active in the lay speaker uh, circle and group. Um, and prayers for your aunt and uncle, who are uh, facing COVID uh, right now, and prayers that they, they um, recover well and get through this well. Others? Yeah, Gabby. What's his name? Artie. Artie. Excellent. So we lift up Artie in praise, a chocolate lab mix that is now part of their home uh, and bringing joy already. So fantastic. Thank you. Yes. For my friend Amy. Amy. Okay. And we were talking about dogs. We celebrated 10 years with our colt this week. Oh, wow. Excellent. So 10 years with your colt. Oh, his name is Colt. Okay. <laughs> so 10 years with Colt, and that's, that's a wonderful thing to celebrate, and we give thanks for Colt, and uh, we pray for Amy uh, and all that she's going through with her, her relationship. So pray for her. Are there others? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to have to have a blessing of the pet service at some point. That'll be cool. Uh, but uh, prayers for families going through difficult situations. And, um, and I'm sorry, what was the other prayer? I got sidetracked. Oh, my son-in-law. Your son-in-law. Sister, right. So prayers for your son-in-law and his family as they mourn the loss of his sister. Are there others? Yes. Yeah. Can you believe there's another hurricane? <laughs> this has been the season for them. So uh, prayers for all the people facing hurricane. Um, last time I checked the track, hopefully it's going to just like brush and then go off into the ocean. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But prayers for anybody that's in the path of, of that storm. So, are there others? And if we can remember, and I know we're going to celebrate this in a little bit, but just lift up the, the veterans uh, that you know, the people that are serving, the people that have served. Uh, as we remember them this day, we'll be celebrating Veterans Day this week. Uh, it started off as Armistice Day, celebrating the end of World War I on November 11th, 1918, and then became Veterans Day in 1954 to celebrate all veterans. Uh, so just remember that. Joelle. <laughs> so yeah, there is that. So anyway, yeah. Thank you, Joelle. Huh? Oh, not everyone heard? That's Okay. We can talk about it later. Now, my birthday is coming up this week, so thank you, Joel, for lifting that up, reminding me one more year. So anyway, thank you. All right, any others? Let us turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning. We give you thanks for the opportunity to come into your presence and lift you up in praise. We give you thanks that you, God, are on the throne 
Uh, and in that, we have our hope, and we have our joy, and we give thanks for that, that as Christian people, we can always find our hope, our peace, and our joy in you. Lord, we lift up to you family members and friends that are facing um, illness, uh, COVID-19, and other, uh, other battles. We give you thanks for those that are recovering uh, from illness. I give you thanks for the, the prayerfulness of this congregation, their willingness to lift one another up in prayer and to offer prayer support for anyone that needs it. We give you thanks for that, Lord. We, we give you thanks for all of our dogs and the different anniversaries going on there and for, for birthdays and other family celebrations taking place. We give you thanks for family members who support us and care for us through so many different situations too. Lord, you are an amazing God. We give you thanks that you are with us. We give you thanks that you provide us with a community of faith to love us and support us. Um, just in all things, Lord, we give you thanks. Uh, and now we lift up the prayer that your Son taught us as we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, for our special music today, I wanted it to be focused on Veterans Day. So I found this montage, uh, and I was in a choice between this one and another one, and this is the one that made Teresa cry. So this is the one that we're showing this morning. So please enjoy the montage. We do salute our veterans, and at this time, if there are any veterans here with us today, we invite you to stand so that we may salute you. <laughs> veterans.
and uh, have a request of all the veterans as we prepare for next year's Veterans Day. Um, if you could send us, like, we have some people's information, but if you could send us your military service information and a picture of you from that military service, we're already in preparation for next year's video of what we're going to be doing. Um, so we'd like to have that so that we could celebrate you uh, and the service that you gave to our country. So we give you thanks. Thanks. All right, and conversation with kids. Excellent. All right, so I know we have some kids here, and I know I can't bring everybody up front, but hopefully you can see me from where you are. Uh, I had a quick message that I wanted to be able to share with you today and some more show-and-tell stuff. You're going to see stuff from my house more than you ever wanted to see, uh, but I bring things in for show-and-tell anyway. Uh, so those that are here, watch what... Um, uh, Listen to what I'm sharing and take a look at the things that I'm sharing with you. Uh, those watching from home, hopefully you'll enjoy this too. So we have two scriptures uh, that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. One is a reminder that we need to remember to love God, that we have one God and that we need to remember to love that God. And the other is a scripture that reminds us to not only love God, but be prepared to do the things and be the disciples that God is calling us to be. So that got me to thinking a little bit and caused me to bring in this stick. Anybody have a walking stick that you use when you're walking around? Yeah, or hiking? I love having hiking sticks. And I found this one, or actually a friend found this and got it to me. Um, and this has like a neat little swirl. So God has already started the process of doing some neat things with this stick, and that's about where it stopped. And I haven't figured out what else I want to do with it. But I've gotten into carving and doing different carvings and stuff like that. In fact, a friend of mine um, does a lot of really cool stuff, and she made this, and it hangs up in my office. And she's really, really good. She knows how to carve all sorts of things in all sorts of different ways. And she's very gifted. And she took me to a carving weekend. And one of my first carving projects ever was this. They call it like a, a wood spirit. And it's almost like Santa Claus on a log. And I made this. I actually took the time and carved this over the course of a weekend, and I was really proud of myself at the end of it for how well I did. Um, and my friend Beth, who took me and Pam both on the weekend for Christmas last year, she got me this really cool carving knife, this wood carving knife. And do you notice that it's still in its package? <laughs> yeah. Joelle was like, didn't you even open that when we were bringing it today? I was like, yeah, I open it, but I'm keeping it there to keep it safe. But it also means I haven't used it since I got it last Christmas. So when I have had a teacher near me, I'm able to do really cool things. And that's why it's important for us to have teachers in our lives that teach us stuff. But it can't stop at what the teacher teaches us. We've got to take it the next step and actually do the practice, do the work. Kind of like if you're on a sports team and you're learning different sports skills, if you only do it at practice and you don't continue to practice on your own, you're not going to get better. You're not going to advance in that. Just like an instrument, you can learn the instrument in class, but if you're not doing practice outside of class, then you're only going to be as good as what the teacher is showing you at that time, right? The teacher I had for this did an amazing job of showing me what I needed to do, but I'm dependent upon the teacher. As Christians, we can either stand alone as disciples, or we can always be dependent upon someone else to tell us what to believe. The point is this, as Christians, we learn from our teachers, we learn from other people, but at some point, we need to take the tools we've been given and the instruction we've been offered and begin to stand alone in our faith. So that's what I want you to take away from today and be able to think of that. Have good teachers, learn from them, but take the lessons that they've taught you and begin to stand on your own and know what it is that you believe. Be the disciple 
that God wants you to be. Let's pray, guys. Dear God, we give you thanks for uh, today, and we give you thanks for this time, and we give you thanks for our teachers, and we give you thanks for all the things that we've learned. Help us to continue to practice them, even when we're not in class, even when we're not in lessons, so that we can stand strong in what we've learned. Help us to be the disciples you would have us be, God. We love you. Amen. All right. Um, so for our offering in the back, um, we're not passing the plate at the moment. We've talked about that uh, because of COVID, but we are still accepting offerings, um, and that comes in many forms. Yes, we need money offerings. That goes to support the church and the staff and everything else. It's a necessary part of what we need to be able to do the ministry that God has called us to here in this church and in this community and beyond that. But we also need you. Like with, Bethlehem, with the return to Bethlehem and the other things that we're doing, you coming out and offering yourself as a gift, that time and service is an important offering too. So just realize that there's many ways that you can offer yourselves to God. Being a prayer warrior for people when they lift up things in prayer, that's an important offering too. We want to remember those offerings and we want to ask God's blessing upon them every Sunday. So would you join me in prayer for the offering? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gifts that have come in, the money offering that has come into the plate, uh, people that have stepped up and done amazing things in your service, those people that may not be coming to church but are at home and willing to pray for anything we ask them to. Lord, we lift up to you all the people offering for your ministry and for your glory. We ask that you bless them and that you multiply them and that you use them to advance your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, thank you. Please remain standing and join us in our hymn of preparation, O Jesus, I Have Promised. And it, I think it's first and last, but just keep singing until the words stop on the screen. Sound good? <laughs> Amen. Please be seated. The first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel. 
which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. And the second reading is from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This ends the reading from the word of our God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Let's uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for those who came before us, Lord. Those who guided us, showed us your love. Those who served you, those that served this country, Lord. People that did things for freedom. People that did things in your name, Lord. How important is freedom because you give us the freedom to know you, Lord. You love us, you care for us, but you want us to have the freedom to know you, to worship you. And I thank God for for your wisdom, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, uh, the our children, Lord. We pray for the generations after us, Lord. We, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless them, that you guide them. We claim them, that they belong to you, Lord Jesus, and that we trust in you, that they are yours. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you, you teach us to show your love to them. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we are soldiers of you, Lord, and that we have uh, um, your wisdom, Lord, and that we will follow you and trust in what you have in store. For you are good, you are great, Lord, and your plan is wonderful. We ask your blessing upon our churches, that you surround your angels around us, and that we are a church filled with joy to serve you, Lord. We give you thanks for Pastor Bill and his message, Lord. Ask your blessing upon him, his message, and his family. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. So last week, we had a chance to imagine what it would be like to be in the full presence of God. We shared the song, I Can Only Imagine, which was all about that, giving just a glimpse of what it might be uh, to be in his heavenly court, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, praising the glory of God for all eternity. What an amazing image that is, and hopefully that was something that you could carry with you over the course of the week. Today we have two passages of Scripture 
that remind us of what we must do to be assured of an invitation to the great gathering that we imagined last week. Our passage from Psalm 78 reminds us that we have one God. We have one God. It is amazing how God's people throughout time have struggled to stay focused on the one God who created all things and gave all that we might have all. It always boggled my mind in reading the Old Testament and seeing the Hebrew people after watching everything that happened in Egypt and watching the Red Sea part that they would so, so soon turn away from God. But at the same time, I look at my own life and I look at the life of other people around me that I look up to and respect in their faith that also have had times that they wander and go in different directions. So all we like sheep, right? So we need to be careful to remember that we have one God that we worship. We must be careful that we do not become seduced by things that might take the place of God for us. Money, things, relationships, or even politics. And we could probably make that list go on and on, but there's so many things that could seduce us away and become our God. But God is our God. The other thing this psalm reminds us is the importance of sharing God with our children so that they can pass it along through all generations. And we'll talk about that more later. Our second scripture from the Gospel of Matthew reminds us to not become lazy or complacent in our faith. If you really read it, that's the message that kind of comes across. I love the wedding imagery that Jesus shared in this parable, though. He seemed to love weddings because he often used them in his illustrations. And what's not to love about weddings, right? It's a day filled with preparations, promises, covenants, and, of course, celebration, right? What's a wedding without a reception, you know? While in weddings, two people commit to one another before God, I often think that it is a great example of how God views our process and choice to become his disciples. We prepare through the help and wisdom of others. We make promises to live our faith in God. We make a covenant between God and all the people gathered to be his disciples. Then we celebrate then we celebrate. And Scripture tells us that all of heaven celebrates too, that the angels sing when someone chooses to follow Christ. In this particular passage, Jesus introduces us to 10 young maidens who are waiting for the groom to invite them into the wedding celebration. Five were prepared and five were not. And it talks about them carrying their oil lamps, and all 10 had the oil lamp with enough oil in it to light for that time, but five of them brought extra oil just in case, and the other five forgot to do that. Jumping to the end, though, of this story, this was a warning to us. We are the maidens, and Christ is the groom. The five maidens who were not ready are all of those people who do what they believe is just enough, bringing just enough oil or what they think might be just enough oil, right? And can't we all fall into that sometimes? I came to church on most Sundays, at least Christmas and Easter. I prayed sometimes until I fell asleep. I own a Bible, and I'm pretty sure I know where I left it. I wore a Christian t-shirt and put a Christian bumper sticker on my car. Doesn't that cover me for sharing the gospel? How many of us can attest to any of those or know of others that can? That's the doing just enough, you know, or thinking that we can put the line on what just enough is. The maidens showed up, but were not fully prepared. 
There are two questions that we need to ask ourselves as disciples of Christ. Are we prepared? And the other one is, and have we prepared others? So starting with us, are we doing the work to be prepared? Are we living our faith like it is real? Does that make sense? Are we living our faith like it is real? Are we living our faith like God is real to us, that God is legitimate, that all of this is exactly as we understand it to be, as we have been taught the faith that we have been brought up in, or are we not? Is there fruit coming from how we are living our faith? Are we living our faith in such a way that we see God using us and the things going on around us to produce glory for God's kingdom? to make a difference in the lives of others? Do our actions lead from what we believe? So are the things that we are doing an example of our faith? Are they being produced by what it is that we believe? Is being a Christian a way of life for us or just a Sunday activity? And I know these questions sound pretty harsh, But I want you to know that these are the questions that I ask myself regularly because I know how easy it is to fall into just going through the motions of just making it an activity that I do on a Sunday or at a time and not really living into it fully or embracing it completely. And I know if that's where I can find myself sometimes, many of you may find yourselves there too. So how do we shake ourselves from that kind of complacency, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and we have to ask those questions. And we have to be honest and truthful with ourselves about where we are. But the thing that's okay with that is even if we find ourselves in that moment where we have become complacent, where we have started to go through the motions, we can be awakened to where we need to be. We can redirect ourselves to be able to go in the direction that God would have us go. So these questions are important. They're important to me because I want my faith to be as real as the God I believe in, the one who saved my life. I want my faith to be an example to my children because I know that their faith will be based on what they see of mine. Does that make sense? That leads into the second question. Are we helping others to be prepared to be the disciples that God is calling them to be. Think about it. Marriage takes work, doesn't it? Those that have been married a long time, marriage takes work, doesn't it? On a daily basis, right? Being a parent takes work. Parents in the room, can I get an amen? Absolutely. Learning a job takes work. People are taught this all the time. We know that things that are worthwhile take work and that we have to put efforts into it. But being a disciple takes work too. Are we teaching others how to be disciples? Just like I shared with the knife. Are we teaching people not just to use it, but to practice it on their own, to become proficient on their own? When I was in boot camp, they put us all through a leadership course that basically taught us this simple concept of leadership. And I've share, I shared a little bit of this with you over the summer. But the concept of it, the basic premise is, I do and you watch me. I do and I get you to do it with me. You do and I watch you do it. You do and train others while I do the same and train someone else. And it's those four basic building blocks. I do, you watch me. I do... We do it together. You do, I watch you, and then you go do it and teach someone else while I do the same thing, you know? And that's kind of the basic premise of leadership that they were sharing in the the military, but it's also the same thing that we're meant to do as disciples. We make disciples who make disciples, but if we make a disciple that's constantly dependent on us and can't go beyond that and teach anyone else, then it stops with us. Even Jesus, with his disciples, he trained them and he sent them out. 
He sent them into villages. He sent them into other places to heal people, to drive out demons and other things. Did they always get it right? No. And they even came back and checked in with Jesus and said, why couldn't we drive out that demon? And Jesus took the time to teach them again and help them to understand where their power is and where it comes from and what they must do. That's the whole teaching process. He knew that he wasn't always going to be with them, and he wanted them to be able to stand on their own and do the things that they were called to do. These are the types of disciples we need to be making also. Otherwise, we're not making anything that's going to last beyond us, and that's not what it's about. As the psalm for today reminds us, God has charged us with sharing the faith with the next generations so that they will be able to share it with the ones to come. If you remember from the song I had uh, Maddie sing for benediction, there's a part in the song when it's saying uh, to share with your children and their children and their children and their children. And I love that part of the song because I can actually get the impression or the image of a legacy being passed along. Remember we talked about that? The idea of you sharing it with your child and making it strong in their life so that they want to share it with their child and they've shared it in such a way with their child that their child then shares it with their children and it just keeps going. It's like that pay it forward image, you know? You just see it progressing on down the line. We have to be mindful that we are to be disciple makers, that it's not enough for us to come in on church on, into church on Sunday just to be fed ourselves for our own, our own purposes, right? We're being fed so that we can feed others. Remember when we had communion, and um, I know it was online, but I was sharing how the early church did it, that they had a huge feast, but at the end of the feast, they would gather up all the leftovers, everything, all the abundance that was left over, and they would take it into the community, and they would give it to other people as they had need. And they would take the money offerings, and they would go into the community, and they would give the money to other people as they had need. That's what it's about. That's what we are about. We should have a sign in the back that says, now entering the mission field. Because you come here and you are fed so that you can then go out and feed others. You become a disciple so that you can go out and make other disciples. That's what it's all about, and we always need to remember that. Beloved, faith is amazing. And being God's disciple is the greatest thing ever. It gives us hope. It gives us hope through anything life and the world throws at us but it takes work. So let's do the work together. What is the work? We need to worship. Let's worship together just as we are now. Whether you're in the room with us or whether you're online, let us worship together. That is part of the work. Let us pray together. Let us make it a point to get on our knees and pray. To not just do it as something that we're trying to get in quickly before our eyes close and we go to sleep, but actually something that we intentionally are doing because it is our moment in the presence of God to be in that presence of God. Let us serve together. And there's so many ways that we can serve whether it's building ramps or putting new roofs on houses or going off to places like that, or whether it's creating food bags or um, doing a, a food mission here in the area or making an Operation Christmas Child shoebox gift, whether you're doing it physically or you're doing it online. There are so many ways for us to serve, but that is a part of the work of being the disciples, becoming the disciples God would have us be. Let's grow in our faith. Some of you are in Sunday school classes. Some of you may have a Bible study or a small group that you're a part of. Or maybe you've been thinking and God's been tugging on your heart for a while that, hey, it would be really great to get a small group together around learning this lesson. Let's do it. We grow by learning, and we grow by learning together. So let's grow in our faith together. And finally, sharing. That's a part of the work of being a disciple. And I know it's probably one of the things that scares us the most, Come on, if I just put a bumper sticker on the car, isn't that enough? 
I'm wearing a t-shirt. I've got a cross on. Isn't that enough? I don't know, is it? Yes, it's an example. Yes, it's something visual that people can latch on to. But what really connects with you? Something you see on a bulletin board or someone sharing a story with you? Someone coming alongside of you and sharing from their heart. I don't know about you, but those are the things that last with me all my life. And I'm not saying go bang on doors and beat people over the head with that Bible that you finally found. You know, that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you have the opportunity, tell people, hey, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, you pray? Yeah, my faith is really important to me. God has done amazing things in my life, and I'm so thankful for it. So I try every day to give back in whatever way I can. That's pretty simple, isn't it? But it plants a seed, and it enters us into a conversation with someone else where they might ask, why is that? And what has God done for you? And then you're not pushing anything on anyone. You're just having a conversation with someone that wants to know more. There's many ways, in easy ways, that we could do profound things to share the gospel of Christ with others. So those are the five pieces of work that I'd like us to do together. Worship, pray, serve, grow, and share. Let's live our faith knowing that God is real. Let's share the belief and practice of faith with others so that future generations will have the faith, hope, love, and forgiveness that we all have. Amen? Amen. Now, if you would uh, please stand, if you are able, and join us in our hymn of sending. Uh, This is Eternal Father, Strong to Save, um, and you may know it as the Navy hymn, but I've always loved using this on Veterans Day, so please enjoy. Amen. Once again, veterans, thank you. Family members of veterans whose hearts went out and prayers went out for them, thank you for what you have given. It is important. It is noticed. And it has secured the freedoms that we've had in this country for so long. And we give you thanks for all that. Beloved, let's do the work together. Let's become the disciples that we are called to be. Let us do the things that God has called us to do, and let us share that with others so that they become disciples who make other disciples too. The Lord make his face shine. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.